Hey everybody, Fishman here. A few months ago I had posted a video, it was entitled The uh, Day in the Life of a Fishman, and this clip is uh, from that video. At the time, the reason I posted it was to show, uh, first off, the tank, and then also part of me uh, cleaning algae off an aquarium. Uh, the algae scraper I'm using came about because, well, when I first started the business uh, many years ago, I used commercially available things, like, el like algae scrapers, and they all had certain shortcomings, <laughs> sometimes because they were short, and I deal with some rather large aquariums and other issues like blaze and stuff, and anyway, I won't go into all those details, but the important thing here is, uh, because they had those shortcomings, I decided to start trying to design my own uh, equipment, and the first thing I actually ever decided to design uh, were algae scrapers, uh, simply because I had, like I said, some really large aquariums. Now, I've tried many different types of materials, like this isn't the first one for sure, uh, and I tried different designs and such, and eventually it led to this. Now, uh, this algae scraper is uh, definitely over 20 years old, I've been using it forever, it is very sturdy, and, well, obviously because it's lasted 20 years. Now, the nice thing about it, it has a good angle on it, and also the blades are interchangeable. Now, I'm not obviously going to stop using this algae scraper, but to uh, make a video, I, <laughs> I'm going to build another one, and you guys will end, well, I'll end up with a spare algae scraper, and you guys get to see the process. Now, I use these blades here uh, mostly because I find these Ulfa blades, especially the large, uh, the, like this is the largest one you can get, uh, and they have a, a rigidity to them, and it's actually well, because of the size of my hands or whatever, it just fits nicely there. I don't uh, always use this algae scraper, like if I have a small tank, uh, I will actually just hold the blade freehand and uh, do the scraping and that sort of stuff that way. And it's just, it has a nice, like I said, it's nice and rigid and it's uh, just easy to work with. And once you put it in here, the whole point of this algae scraper is to uh, position the blade in such a way that I don't have to pay attention to exactly where the blade is. The blade only hangs out by a certain amount. As you can see there's pretty much the thickness of the bevel on the blade itself. And it doesn't overhang except by maybe tiny, um, like you can feel the tip of the blade if you run your finger down the side. And the reason for that is I can on a large tank where I'm scraping and my arm is in the tank and then this thing <laughs> is two feet further away, I can't really see specifically where the blade is. So I want to make sure I don't end up hitting uh, the edge of a silicone a bead or anything like that and end up scraping off <laughs> something important. So that is the whole purpose behind this design. And this is all you need to make one. Uh, I just cut out these pieces. Uh, it's just a quarter inch uh, clear acrylic uh, and those strips are uh, inch and a half uh, wide and all you do is you just glue them together in a T. Don't worry, I won't show you the whole process because you've seen me glue acrylic so many times. Uh, but the thing is, I just wanted to show you how simple it is here. It's just a simple matter of semi <laughs> putting it in the center. It doesn't need to be precise. Uh, it just needs to be uh, forming this T which makes it rigid and stiff, that's all. Because, you know, acrylic is flexible, so you want to make it as um, as stiff as possible so that you can get some pressure on uh, scraping the algae off. And like I said, I use this for the harder kinds of algae, like browns and that sort of stuff to get off the glass. So that, I won't show you all this, but the after this, the next thing is the kind of the important part, which is that, uh, that the facing here, where the the square piece of acrylic. Now the reason that it's this wide is obvious because it needs to fit the blade. So if you choose a different size blade, uh, like if you have smaller tanks you just, you know, <laughs> like I said, this, this isn't really necessary, but anyway, uh, you can use smaller blades if you like, and then you would make this uh, not as wide. And now the important part here is, as I'm demonstrating, is uh, you need to make sure that the blade hangs over by just to kind of like the narrowest of margins. I suspect it would work fine um, if it were sticking out further, uh, but I'm not going to mess with this design because, uh, like I said, it's worked so well for so long. 
So I just glue this on. This is a piece of quarter inch uh, square tube. It's extruded tube acrylic. Uh, I could have cut obviously a, a small piece of uh, quarter inch, but I have this lying around, so I use that. And then that's as easy as that is. Now the only other critical thing is drilling the hole. If you, depending on how you drill the hole, you'll end up with it, the blade either hanging over or being a bit too far back. And then what you need to do here is cut a 45 degree. Uh, 45 is not essential. Uh, I just used 45 degrees because, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just the way the first one worked. I, I picked it randomly, I think, at the beginning. And then it worked so well, I just never really put any thought into it after that. The thing is, is when you have your hand in the aquarium, you can adjust the angle slightly by moving your hand closer or further away from the glass. And the 45 just worked out well. So here I've done, I've uh, drilled the hole. It's just a quarter inch hole. Uh, I think during one of the uh, iterations of this, I had uh, tapped and threaded that and just screwed it into the acrylic. Uh, I since then have not bothered with that. Uh, it's just easier to use the bolt even though I end up <laughs> losing a few of those. I keep spares in my uh, equipment bag just in case because <laughs> I get to sight sometimes and need to use this and it's fallen out or whatever. It's, it's kind of hard to find a small bolt like that. So anyway, I'm just showing you here how the hole can, if you depending on how you want to adjust it, you could end up with it hanging over a little bit. And I just do it so that you can just barely feel uh, the tip of the blade so again I don't have to pay attention to that and then all there is now is taking this, this is a 45 degree cut and all I'm gonna do is place it on it doesn't have to be in the center it doesn't have to be square or anything uh, I have thought about making one at an angle just to see how that scrapes but again like I said it just works well so <laughs> I didn't bother so here I'll just glue that on it's very straight very straightforward it's just uh, an easy glue again and then all that's left to do here is uh, show you the comparison between the two of them. Uh, the only difference I did for this particular one is I made it uh, a little bit longer. Because there is a one tank I have, uh, well it's 14 feet long, it's just easier if I have a bit more reach so I don't have to reset the, where the, my ladder or stool or whatever is so I can clean it faster. So, so this one's a little bit longer. And... Uh, that's pretty much the end of this build. It's very straightforward, very easy. Uh, and I recommend trying this out because, it, like I said, it's an easy build and it works really, really well. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you uh, enjoy this style of video. Uh, please like and or subscribe. And if you don't mind, hang around to the end because there's uh, something else I want to show you guys uh, before, uh, before I sign off. All I'm going to do here first is just... Uh, put the blade on and uh, do a side-by-side -side comparison for the two. Now, over the last little while I've been doing a lot of builds and a couple of subscribers have uh, mentioned that they <laughs> would be very interested in uh, you know, getting some of the stuff I've made. So, if you remember from a little while ago I made a bunch of um, box filters and one particular one I made uh, was, uh, the, you know, the super simple, easy DIY, oh, there they are, uh, box filters. And I, it was just a quick, easy knockoff I did. I don't have the aquarium space right now to uh, test out how well they're going to work. So what I thought I'd do is I would send them to uh, all three different people. Uh, one's kind of a thank you for some stuff I got sent, uh, but I'm kind of hoping that uh, these people will try them out and let me know how they work. Like I said, I don't know how they're going to do. Uh, it's a uh, simple design. I've glued the bases on uh, to make it a bit easier to work with. And also I've added a, a rigid tubing with uh, an airstone on just so that they're different than the ones here. I don't think I prefer the airstones personally, but I wanted to make them a little bit different. Like I said, this is a complete test. I have no idea how well they're going to work and I'm just hoping that it's going to work out well. It could be a complete and total bust. I don't know. Uh, one other small thing that happened is when I was making them, I had to pick up a couple more of these end caps, and apparently the end caps in this particular batch have slightly rounded bottoms, so that one wobbles a bit. Uh, sorry about that, but like I said, this is just a pure test, and hopefully, like I said, it'll work out. 
So I'm gonna get a hold of these people and let them know and see if they are interested. And if they aren't, uh, maybe I will put this up for something else. <laughs> this is an opaque one I was gonna make, but I messed it up, so it's gonna get left out unfortunately. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I will let you know how this progresses, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.